What if I told you your body has a secret factory producing tiny hard rocks right now? Not in a quarry, but inside you. These aren't just any rocks, they're gallstones, and their formation is a surprisingly complex process that's happening more often than you think and can lead to serious complications. Get ready to discover the hidden geological marvels within your own anatomy. Welcome everybody, this is Dr. Valentin here at Houston Metropolitan Medical. We have to start with the gallbladder, where the stones are made. So the gallbladder is a pear-shaped sac about 7 to 10 centimeters long with an average capacity of 30 to 50 milliliters. Its function is to concentrate and store bile and deliver it to your bowel in response to a meal to help absorb those nutrients and fats. It is located on the inferior surface of the liver and delivers bile via the cystic duct and the common bile duct into your small bowel. So what are gallstones and how do they form? Well, bile is a combination of bilirubin, bile salts, phospholipids, and cholesterol. Cholesterol is insoluble in water, and it's kept insoluble by this mixture of phospholipid, cholesterol, and bile salt complex. And there are conditions where there is an increased secretion of cholesterol into the bile, supersaturating it, and allowing for cholesterol crystals to form. Gallstones are classified as cholesterol or pigmented stones, depending on their cholesterol content. And in our side of the pond, in the Western world, 80% of gallstones are cholesterol stones, which are made up of more than 70% cholesterol by weight. So gallstones can cause gallstone disease, and it's one of the most common problems affecting the digestive tract. Risk factors are many, which include age, gender, and ethnicity, and certain conditions that can predispose you to develop Gallstones like obesity, pregnancy, dietary factors, Crohn's, gastric surgery, among other things. Women are three times more likely to develop gallstones than men. And if your parents or siblings have gallstones, you are two times more likely to develop gallstones than the general population. Now, most patients with gallstones will remain asymptomatic throughout their lifetime. And for unknown reasons, some patients will progress to a symptomatic stage with biliary colic caused by obstruct an obstructing stone. And symptomatic patients may progress to complications related to gallstones like acute inflammation of the gallbladder known as acute cholecystitis, um, of a stone blocking the ducts or the common bile ducts that can present just as an obstruction or an obstruction with infection of, that, of those bile, bile ducts and sometimes even gallstone pancreatitis. But rarely patients present with complications when they first come into our office. Approximately 3% of asymptomatic individuals become symptomatic per year. And one symptomatic complications develop in only 3-5% to of those symptomatic patients per year. Over a 20-year period, about 66% of asymptomatic patients with gallstones remain symptom-free. Therefore, because few patients develop complications without previously having symptoms, gallbladder removal in asymptomatic patients with gallstones is rarely indicated. On the other hand, for elderly patients with diabetes, for individuals who will be isolated uh, from the medical care for long periods of time, and with patients with increased risk for developing gallbladder cancer, then prophylactic removal of the gallbladder is advised. So how does symptomatic gallstone disease present? How, does it, how do patients come into the clinic? Uh, what symptoms do they have? Once you become symptomatic, the disease is called biliary colic and it can progress to chronic cholecystitis. And biliary colic is characterized by recurrent episodic attacks of pain with symptom-free intervals. The pain is located in the epigastric and right upper quadrant that frequently radiates to the right upper back or between the scapula. The pain is constant and increases in severity over the first half an hour and typically lasts between one to five hours. The pain is severe and comes abruptly. Typically, patients present with complaints of uh, it happening during the night or after a fatty meal. And most times, lab results when patients are having these type of pains are within normal range, like your white blood cell count is normal and your liver function tests are normal as well. 
Not all patients present with these typical findings. Sometimes they present with only back pain, left upper quadrant pain, or right lower quadrant pain, which means we have to evaluate the patient for other problems as well, like for example, gastric ulcer, acid reflux, diverticulitis, appendicitis, kidney stones, heart attack, all of these possibilities when a patient comes into the clinic presenting with abdominal pain. A diagnosis of gallstone disease or symptomatic gallstone disease is made with the presence of gallstones and having symptoms of gallstone disease like we talked about previously. The abdomen ultrasound is the standard diagnostic test for gallstones and even if a gallstone are seen or identified on a CT scan from somebody that goes to the emergency room for acute abdominal pain, ultrasound of the gallbladder and the biliary tree should be added before having surgery. So how do we treat this? All symptomatic patients are advised to have their gallbladder removed and laparoscopic cholecystectomy is the treatment of choice. Diabetic patients with symptomatic gallstone should have their gallbladder removed promptly since they are more prone to develop complications. And in a special population of patients, like for example, pregnancy, pregnant women can safely undergo gallbladder removal during their second trimester. So now let's talk about when symptomatic gallstone disease turns into complications of gallstone disease. So acute cholecystitis is when an obstruction of those bile ducts uh, leads to inflammation of the gallbladder wall. Sometimes this inflammation can also turn into a bacterial contamination in about 15 to 30 percent of patients. The location of the pain and symptoms are identical to biliary colic but more severe and also a positive Murphy signs which is when we press on the right upper quadrant and you take a deep breath the pain is so bad that it stops you from breathing. This is very characteristic of patients with acute cholecystitis or that inflammation of the gallbladder wall. A diagnosis is made with abdominal ultrasound, uh, which um, has to have findings that include gallstones. Uh, the gallbladder wall is usually thickened to more than three millimeters, and we see fluid around the gallbladder, which means inflammation. A CT scan is usually ordered in the emergency room for an acute abdominal pain, and it can potentially diagnose acute cholecystitis, but it's less sensitive than an ultrasound. So how do we treat a patient with acute cholecystitis? Patients with acute cholecystitis should be admitted and resuscitated with IV fluids with, started on IV antibiotics and provided with adequate pain control. Early removal of the gallbladder performed between two to three days when pain has started is preferred unless the patient is unfit for gallbladder removal. And early removal of the gallbladder is recommended during the same hospital stay. When patients present late, like after three to four days, and if they are unfit for surgery, they can be treated with antibiotics alone and resuscitated with IV fluids and scheduled for a surgery a few months later. Although some patients will fail this treatment and might need intervention, but still be unfit for gallbladder removal, so drainage of the gallbladder to help relieve that inflammation or infection if there's an infection can be performed with a tube placed through your abdomen wall into your gallbladder, allowing for that bile and infection and inflammation to drain uh, and helps it go away. Another complication of gallstones is having one of those gallstones lodge into the bile ducts. Stones in the common bile duct, which is the main duct right before entering the bowels, are present in about 6 to 12% of patients with gallstones. And the risk increases with age with about 20 to 25 percent of patients above 60 with symptomatic gallstones having stones in the common bile duct as well as in the gallbladder. These stones in the common bile duct or in the biliary system may be silent and discovered only incidentally. They may also cause obstruction and may present with infection of the common bile duct or also pancreatitis. Patients sometimes can present with jaundice or yellowing of the skin and we will see elevation of alkaline phosphatase, bilirubin, and liver function test when the patient has uh, this problem. Ultrasound is the first test after labs are done for these patients. Um, and if there's gallstones with dilation of the common bile duct on a patient with jaundice 
and having epigastric or right upper quadrant pain is highly suggestive of common bile duct stones. Treatment for these are endoscopic cholangiography, and it's the gold standard because it provides diagnosis and also it's therapeutic, which helps us remove these gallstones from the bile ducts. After the stones are removed, then gallbladder removal should follow. So when there's a stone in the common bile duct or in the biliary tree and it becomes infected, we call it cholangitis. And it can present with what we call Charcot's triad in about 67% of the cases with fever, right upper, right upper or epigastric pain, and jaundice. When Charcot's triad in combination with elevation of alkaline phosphatase, uh, bilirubin, uh, liver function test, a clinical diagnosis of cholangitis is made. Patients with cholangitis should be admitted and resuscitated with IV fluids and antibiotics uh, started, and as soon as the patients are stable enough, they should undergo endoscopic cholangiography for an evaluation and bile duct obstruction drainage. And after that, gallbladder remo removal. If patients do not become stable, a drain of the gallbladder via tube is also done to improve the infection. Lastly, for the purpose of this video, um, patients can present with gallstone pancreatitis, which is another complication of gallstones, presenting with epigastric pain radiating to the back, and there is elevation of uh, another type of enzyme in lab work that we check, which is lipase during episodes of pancreatitis. And pancreatitis can be caused by several factors, like for example, uh, pancreatitis can be as a result of alcohol intake or um, very, very high triglyceride levels. But an ultrasound to check for gallstone should always be done on patients with pancreatitis because if gallstones are present and the pancreatitis is severe, a endoscopic calandrogram uh, can help us extract the stones and halt that episode of pancreatitis. And once pancreatitis has calmed down and you improve and the patient is resuscitated, then the patient should undergo gallbladder removal. So we have gone over what the gallbladder is and how gallstones are formed. We talked about gallstone disease, how it presents, and what are its complications and treatments. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to keep up to date with our most recent videos. Thank you, and until next time.